and it's on. So what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lightshare. Today, I'm here with Dom and Andre as usual, and we wanted to discuss a bunch of things that I actually don't know how to start right now <laughs> with, but uh, it's going to be mostly like a conversation. So we're just going to be delving into different topics and discussing whatever um, comes into the conversation. So uh, let's, we, we can start by, you know, sharing a little bit Recapping of like ourselves. Yeah. Our <laughs> recent two months. Yeah, our recent yeah, feats and achievements and I, stuff like that. We've uh, been busy. Date only. How, yeah, that's why we, we've been away for a little while. It's like yeah. life has been busy <clears throat> for all of us. So Very busy. <laughs> thankfully, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. So New opportunities, new jobs, new life changes, new... Yeah. A lot of things. Um, Look, on my side, for instance, it's been like a crazy journey of like a lot of changes, you know, like one after another, like I kept just, I don't know, dude, like I, I feel so good and, and so happy and so fulfilled right now in so many ways, like professionally, personally, physically, like my health has been improving so much. It's not that I was sick or ill or anything like that before, no, but, but I can... I think even on um, like... People will notice, like you got a lot slimmer ever since, like the last yeah, episode as well. Dude, dude this is you, bro. congratulations, by the way, man. Like, Thank yeah. you so much, man. I still have to make that <laughs> video that I promised so many people who reached out all um, through my Instagram when I posted that I was gonna be doing this experiment. You know, every uh, everybody was like, "Oh, you gotta tell us about this." You know how it went. And I'm like, "Don't worry, guys. I'm making a video. I recorded every step of the process. Every day, I would log in and kind of." talk a little bit of how it went but i never actually got the time to uh, sit down and and go through the editing process of the video because lots of opportunities started to happen so i'm realizing how everything comes at you when you align yourself with your goals with your vision or with mm. your dreams whatever that is and dude i'm so so glad to see so many people around me thriving and succeeding and doing their best and achieving this their... kind of what we yeah wanted to talk about so exactly so yeah, let's everyone get, let's get into it yeah let's get into it cool. so um so maybe a good way to like uh dive into it is like why don't you tell exactly what changed ever since the last episode like so we can do like around yeah. With yeah. all of us, yeah. because it's like a lot happened. Uh, mm -hmm. I think even like uh, mostly like for you guys, I guess. But I think on my life as well. So it would be cool to yeah, you do it, a lot uh, too. I would say like, it changed yeah. pretty much a lot on your side too. Like yeah. your background, yeah, just, but, uh, <laughs> you're not in the yeah, same I place anymore. The background, you know, it's just like a virtual background, and uh, I, I faked it's it. It's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I. I Look, I don't even remember exactly when the last episode was. Uh, was I think it was back in March or April, maybe, or if, if I'm not yeah, wrong. Yeah, April. But I, yeah, I think you know, in <clears throat> my mind, it. I remember it like so much longer ago, like last year or something like that, because it's been so so long, and because we've been so busy with everything we've been up to lately, it feels like it's been ages, you know, since we made one, but. Um, ever since this, uh, this year, I mean, January, December, you know, I, I did that thing where you don't wait until Monday or until the first day of the next month to begin something. I started to do it right that day. And, um, I started to change my lifestyle, basically all the choices I usually make on a daily basis about like my routine, my habits and all that stuff. I started to change all of that, like what I eat, when I eat, how much I eat. Um, and, uh, what, what do I do here at the computer, you know, consuming entertainment or working or playing video games or not, or watching movies or not, or like the way you sleep even believe it or not, that's super important. And I. Um, you guys know me, like I, I look at sleep as like a sacred kind of thing and I don't want to cut out on sleep time and I try to respect my schedule as much as I can. And that means no phone in bed, 
right uh, right before going to sleep and you know don't look at your phone the first thing in the morning for instance even though sometimes you slip you slip off you know you slip away or whatever that expression is like you you kind of slack off on that habit and you end up doing it anyway but uh it's you see how it, how it, it's important because it's how, how would you say this like it's um it's a main habit it's like most of your time you do this and some days you kind of cheat a little bit right it's almost like a cheat meal or something like that i yeah. i allow but myself like, if you to get take it down like for 80 percent of the time that's what i mean already, like yeah so good, you know i fixed most of these bad habits that i considered bad habits that were holding me back on so many things and dude you guys would be mm -hmm. surprised how how much energy you feel how much things you get done you know when you focus and i think this is what all the three of us have been doing late lately no distractions we've been cutting mm. out on entertainment and when i say entertainment i mean the bad one not the inspiring thing you do for recreation and stuff like that no 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 like the the uh the addiction component in entertainment right like what's present like in most video games online video games or, and stuff like that yeah, yeah exactly yeah or just like browsing youtube for yeah because i bet hours. i bet yeah. we watch a good movie every now now and then or a tv show or, or something even a like bad that movie <laughs> or, <laughs> but it's or like, movie. yeah i yeah, have but, a movie in the background yeah, yeah no but, but, but i mean like um i think like the way that you're consuming entertainment it's it changed you know it's not like that all-consuming habit right it's more of like it's intentional so even if you're like sitting down to do something you're not just mindlessly doing that you're actually like <clears throat> okay this time i'll devote to like this thing and i know that this won't take over everything else or yeah it's ex so establishing on. a schedule basically instead of like going with whatever you feel like going with the flow or whatever you call that because i've done that too yeah. you know i was like no nah, i'm not going to restrict myself in any way shape or form i'm just going to go with whatever i want to do anytime i want to do it and yeah that's in my opinion the exact opposite of discipline so i discipline I ended up is like yeah doing the doing the hard work especially if you don't feel like it <laughs> shout out to hamza <laughs> yeah, self yeah dude you too seriously channel. It's like do it yeah, hard it's doing, when it's hard to do it. Yeah. Like the days that you don't want to do the hard work are the days that you have to do it. And that's discipline, essentially. Like um, the work that you don't want to do when you get up in the morning or something. Yeah. Eat that frog, right? The frog here is like a metaphor for the, the ugly thing you don't want to do. The ugly task, the big elephant in the room you don't want to address because it's scary it's like oh, i'll leave it for later whatever you know and then it ends up not getting done because you don't want to do it because you're too tired from the whole day and i'll do it tomorrow you know and that tomorrow never happens it never happens you know <laughs> so uh it's it's this change this switch in in mentality that actually gets things done like when you choose when you make that decision to you know instead of doing this thing that i've been doing so far every single time in this situation right now i make the decision of like addressing this approaching this tackling this task in a different way so instead of quitting now instead of saying oh i'm too t i'm too tired you know i need a nap or whatever i'm gonna stay you know, i'm gonna do it i'm gonna face this thing and do it and get it done believe it or not like you end up tired anyway but it's way more satisfying. It's like um, there's a difference between exhaustion from overthinking or like regret or something like that and being tired from having tried and failing or winning. It doesn't matter, but you tried. You've been there. You tried it. So uh, that's way more fulfilling. And if you come back again, you'll get it done most likely. And that's way more fulfilling and way more satisfying than if you constantly delay things again and again and again. Mm -hmm. The only thing you should delay yeah. is like instant gratification, <laughs> you know, because yeah. every now and then, okay, it's cool. Yeah. But it, if you turn that you into like a daily stimulation, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I was it's watching a, an episode of like, I don't know if you guys know Andrew Huberman. Oh, uh, yeah. He's that like uh, neuro, he's neuroscientist, a neuroscientist or something. Right? Like that. Yeah, he has like a very nice uh, podcast on Spotify and he was talking about like strategies to kind of, it's not only making yourself more motivated, but like strategies to improve your own life, right? And how to like make your brain think about it. And one of the things is like the reward should come at like unspecified intervals. So it's not like that, uh, as an example, one of the things that people, yeah, it should be spontaneous, but also like what really keeps you doing stuff. It's like if you get rewarded, but you don't know exactly when you get the reward. Yeah. So instead of being something like, oh, um, because I worked out, now I can come back home and eat a piece of chocolate or something like that. Uh, if you know that the chocolate will be there, that uh, loses the meaning of the motivation that it will give you. So like, like, let's say that I can only eat that if I work out, right? After a while, that stops working. So then like, it's way better for you. It, and I might be butchering this, so like, it's better <clears throat> and watch the actual podcast but it's something like set like don't have the set rewards that you'll get mm -hmm. let that factor yeah. be a little bit more spontaneous and then like mm -hmm. the actual work and the actual habits that you uh create to deserve that reward it's something like um create a few habits like establish a few habits that you need to do uh, on a daily basis. So let's say establish like five or six habits that you want to do on a daily basis and do like only four of them or only five of them. Don't do all of them every single day. And then like this allows you to change what habit, habit you're like pushing every single day. So it keeps like fresh. So you're not yeah. like every single day getting bored by the same thing. And then like uh, those rewards, it's it's like unpredictable so then your brain doesn't get used to it you know so it's like oh now i got something nice that i deserve because i did all of that but it's better for me to keep doing it because i don't know when the next reward will come yeah and this like, apparently increases the amount of motivation and this like how much you are able to stick to things that's kind of hard to trick, I think actually to fake if you have this set motivation then you know you're yeah you're not going to be more likely to do it because things can go on forever you know like or days months or years so like if you have that set time limit um you'll crave it or you're cave into your cravings so yeah i think it's important to just do it continuously but yeah don't have like that set time limit just do it until you hit that streak and then just, you know, do it, get it over with, and then restart it again if you have to. <clears throat> but don't like beat yourself over your yeah. head if it's not like working. Or something. Yeah, Th that's also something that he mentioned, you know, like if you missed one of the things that you like plan your day to do, like let's say that I plan to have a sketch every single day and I miss one day, tomorrow, I don't do like two sketches to compensate. Like compensation doesn't work mm. for your brain, you know. So it's like you missed, you missed. That's right. Move on. Next day, one sketch, the same thing. You know, just like hop back on the horse and keep going. It's not a. That's like, something I made peace with lately. You know, when you you miss one time, like okay, you oh, missed. I, I remember we, we talked about this like a while back. Like you were one of the people that like. If you lose a streak, it kind of like go, goes downhill. It demotivates. So have yeah. you changed that? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so before we get into this, I just want to say that I figured out I'm actually just recording myself right now. <laughs> That's the camera I'm using here and this screen for Discord. <laughs> but they only hear our voices, but they only see me. They only see Adrian. So, um, so it's Adrian's podcast. Podcast with yeah i've invited a, guests, you know? i've invited a, a couple of dudes to talk on my podcast <laughs> but but um i i can't change the screen right now unless i stop i stop recording um i'm not sure how to do this like maybe well, let's if you guys could stop, record and then we cut that off on the stop and then we just glued both videos together 
that's all. That's all right. Like that will be like the first 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I, so, I'm going to stop now. All right. Finally, we see all the three of us. All right. Okay. Let, let's give Andre like 10 seconds. <clears throat> Because we just, you know, he was, <laughs> I was just like, there's uh, already some coke here myself. on the side to get energy <laughs> for the episode. It's all right. All right. <clears throat> now it's all the three of us on screen. Finally, I apologize for that. But um, yeah, where we were, uh, what we were talking about is this tendency to kind of be really demotivated by, you know, oh, I missed. Damn, now I have to start all over again. Well, this time I approach that with a different mentality. Like, I'm going to take this very basic example, right? With weights, for instance. You go to the gym, you think you can lift a lot more, you do it, you get injured, then you have to spend a lot of time recovering and you can't do shit and you feel bad because you're... Uh, useless you're worthless you can't do anything you know you're weak you're whatever whatever bad thought negative kind of thinking can come up and what i did this time was to start respecting my boundaries right remember how i got myself injured because my body was not in the same place that my mind was my mind was back in time where the athletic flexible Adrian was and my body was not so I forced my body thinking that I can st I still have this I got this you know I can do it and I couldn't do it and I got myself hurt and now I knowing that I, I approach this with a totally different uh, mentality like I can take the little weights and do this exercise safe for this week next week it's it's a progressive kind of improvement every time you add a little more weight despite feeling like this is like this doesn't do anything you know this is nothing why am i even doing this <laughs> there's no results from this come on so it's all about the muscle memory the movement the motion like getting used to that and then you start gradually uh adding weights fortunately the exercises i was doing had like so many different levels of execution like you could take level zero or level three depending on where you know you do like a little test in the beginning like let's see how much can i take from this you know and then you allow yourself to gradually improve every week or every uh, training session whenever that happens every month i don't know the cool thing is that you can look back and say holy shit dude i can now do stuff i was very far from in the beginning like i couldn't even dream about doing yeah. this in the very beginning look at me now it's only been two <laughs> months imagine six months or one year or whatever you know, only if you keep going, by the way, because it's so easy to say, ah, okay, I made it. Now I settle, you know, and then you lose it. You lose it. You, you all know how yeah. like losing one week of, of training or two weeks of training affects your performance the next time you try. Yeah. Was you like, feel pudgy. It's, it's a, it's <laughs> a huge, it's a huge pushback, right? So yeah, it's like it, one week of non-training looks like yeah, like a one week or two weeks. <laughs> it's like physically is not that impactful, but like mentally you're also like start to destabilize, you know, because you're like, oh, yeah. I haven't been here like for a couple of weeks. I'm you're so much weaker. Then, yeah, yeah. We don't even like try to do the things as hard <clears throat> to push ourselves as hard anymore because we're like, oh man, I've been like messing up. You grow soft, yeah. brother. Soft and weak. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's truly when, that. Sometimes when like people get relationship weight in certain relationships, they like just let themselves go when they get, you know, yeah, partnered up with somebody. I got the girl. I don't, don't have to work out to anymore. Work out. <laughs> I gained like twenty pounds ever since I started dating. But it's because I was like this super skinny dude. You know? It's it's pounds of muscle, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if it's training. It's probably like around thirty or forty. Like I 
gained quite a bit of weight. You know, uh, how much nice. is it? Like about 15 to 20 kilos. That's, I think, Whoa, 40 really? pounds, right? Yeah, that, that's yeah. pretty much a it's lot. Good. <laughs> it's good. And she, she's been like working out as lo a lot as well. You know, like we, we really built this like to motivate each other to keep growing. And yeah, yeah it's great to have someone like that you can kind of like what we do with each other as well like we push ourselves to hey have you worked out today like how is it like the exercise going and even if it's not yeah. like going great at least you have someone to check up on you and say hey uh i knew you had this goal like are you working towards it yeah i i guess yeah. it's it's mostly <clears throat> about like your purpose like why are you doing this why do you work out why do you draw why do you wake up every day to do whatever you you do i don't know whatever that could be Everybody like anything knows that it's to look good naked right <laughs> yeah <laughs> like <laughs> look it might sound like um like fake or like yeah you're just making this up but i didn't start to do this thinking that i would change my physical appearance you know i did it like in a way in the background of your mind you're aware of this like that change follows right no matter what if you keep going something's gonna change visibly but um you approach it more from um like what's under the hood of a car you know instead of like the nice paint job and everything on the exterior you care more about like <laughs> the the actual functional well performance of the car I'm comparing I, I a human know, body to um, a car now. Well, I, yeah, I, I, I understand that, but uh, that's not why whoa, I whoa, particularly whoa, started. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, keep Slow going. Soldier down. <laughs> so, uh, the way when I started, like I started at 18, so it's been like 10 years now. Mm -hmm. um, I started because I looked myself in the mirror and I didn't like what I saw, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm like ugly and like all of the secondary benefits like the under the hood thing of like oh you feel better you're like more energetic you're all of that came in as a bonus for me you know like when i first started that was not the goal <clears throat> like i uh and i think people dismiss the idea of oh uh you do this for aesthetic purposes i people i think people dismiss that idea too quickly you know as if it was like less uh valuable it's almost but like the, a stigma like, nowadays. An important role in weight Look, training the, too. Like the idea both that you, uh, strength and aesthetics. Yeah, the idea that you, like for your self esteem, for yourself to look like in the mirror and actually enjoy that. Like I don't mean it in a like super weird way, you know. But like you carry yourself in a more like more proudly if you know that hey, I'm like a well presented human being. Like I have a uh, decent appearance, even though like. There are things that you cannot change. The ones that you can, it's in like in my head. I actually should, you know. It's like if it's within my power to be better at something, it's almost like a responsibility to to do that. It's almost like the the waste of that potential. It's That's it's an it. insult, you know. It would be a, a tragedy I mean, not to experience what you could perform like at full potential. That, well, that's the way yeah. I see it. Like, I feel bad when I'm not giving my best. But Until, like, you, under, you understand that you can't yeah. give your best every single it, time. You can't it, be sprinting forever, right? You no, have to take breaks. Uh, there's this guy that I follow. He says, like, oh, you should, like, do your best of that day. There are days that your best is a little bit, like, better. There are days that your best is a little bit lower than average. But if it, on that day you give the best that you can do on that day, like that's all that you need to do. And if you have that mentality towards like exercise, like you have the mentality towards everything, you know, because like on my, even on my day to day work, right. Uh, one of the things like pisses me off. It's when I see someone that kind of like has more potential to do like better but it's lazy, and they don't. It's like, yeah. Right. Because I, I know like I'm not a, a super amazing artist, right. But I try my best every single day and I might, I put my best effort in every single day for every client, for like every piece of artwork that I'm doing. And I think you carry that through everything that you do in your life, you know? So like, yeah. uh, I try to be the best partner that I can. I like for my dog, I try to be like the best owner, the best, like, and for 
to, to my parents, I try to be the best son. Like it's, it revolves, like encompasses everything <clears throat> in your life. If you have that mentality, right? That's what yeah, I was Cause it all like, yeah, what you put out into the world, it kind of seeps through everything, you know? Um, it's it spills onto every area of your life you know this is how it at least that's how it happened for me you know um it's it became like a stigma you know to to be regarded as something selfish to do to work on yourself to take care of your body of your appearance your physical your uh, visual appearance right like oh i want to look good in the mirror you know i want to be happy with what i see I know that's that's kind of it's sub people subject hate to admit this no that's kind of yeah, subjective like, in a way because you know there's certain people that they see themselves in a mirror with a distorted filter so they think they're fat mm -hmm. or they think they're um um too Body slim disorder. or whatever yeah they 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 yeah. see themselves in a in a way that they're not right so Look, in my case, I just try to do like a self um, examination, you know, exercise like, hey, Adrian, how are you actually feeling about yourself? Like, okay, you're aware you're not perfect, right? But are you aware that you're not that bad as you think you are? Like, you could be better for sure. But what are you going to do to change that, right? And I'm like thinking of like how to approach this and like uh, unlike andre what he said he started for right in my case it was more like dude i want to feel better on the inside you know like i started to become worried about the the the, ha the habits we developed in in the modern days of our society you know the, the food we eat the the different kind of stresses we subject ourselves to day to day and i'm trying to minimize all of that i'm trying to not eat more any more processed food to minimize the intake of this kind of thing this kind of other thing this kind of and um i'm realizing that i'm actually feeling better so it works for me right and then on top of that i shouldn't say on top of that because it's like in a parallel way you know, I'm like, I'm going to do this workout because I want to take my flexibility back. I want to become agile again. I want to be flexible again. I want to have that elasticity again in my muscles and stuff. And at the same time, that's why I'm saying, guys, like this year, I've been doing so many things at the same time. And it was like an avalanche of like opportunities and lots of things pouring into my life like crazy. It's been the same we way for you. I know it. Yeah, like... The new yeah. opportunities. So it's, it's probably a good segue into Let's that. Just but like through each one of us, like what opportunities we've got, and like what what we did as a result to get those opportunities. Sure. So <laughs> you want to start? Go ahead. No. Go you first? seem like you know exactly what you want to say. <laughs> I want to hear what you guys say first. <laughs> Unless, All right. okay. Do you want me to go? <laughs> yeah, okay. do it. Come on. Um, yeah, so I guess, like, I think it was six months ago, you know, I wasn't really doing any jobs other than, like, the small freelance work I was doing and, like, Brainstorm and the other teaching gig I had. So I didn't really, like, have that many opportunities. I was still like kind of working out a little bit doing calisthenics starting to learn more about nutrition and stuff and so <clears throat> i mean you guys saw my past photo like what i looked like <laughs> i looked completely out of shape and just you know kind of skinny fat so i wanted to like change myself like externally but also internally too i wanted both like strength and aesthetics because i wasn't really satisfied with how it looked i was like passed over looked over no one took me seriously you know i just i didn't even like take myself seriously because i was kind of i had like a little bit more low self-esteem with my past 
physique, and so I wanted to level that up. And then <clears throat> through time, I just did like a lot of the calisthenics training. I just did push-ups every day, pull-ups every day, because I didn't really have money to go to a gym. So I just did like workouts at the park and also my iron gym on my door. And so after like realizing for a couple of months, you know, like working on myself, working on my body, my nutrition, and just like my overall appearance, like how I presented myself to people out there, it like, I started to see that shift slowly over time that like people were becoming more receptive. People started becoming more like friendly and inviting compared to the past where I was like treated with disrespect and like people didn't really care about what I had to say or my opinion. And I was like, damn, this is like, what's going on? I feel like the universe is sort of throwing stuff like towards me after like working on myself. And so it's kind of like that thing we all talked about the like law of attraction stuff, how it's an energy. Like what you, what you, you put it. out there is going to come back to you. Yeah. Like what positive effects, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and I so, mean, whether you think you're in a bad situation or a good situation, that influences the ultimate outcome mm -hmm. of that, you know? Not yeah. to say that if you're in a bad situation and you keep thinking, this is not happening, this is not happening is going to change you know you have to take action and do something about it it's exactly what you did i had a pretty negative mindset back then just because i didn't think the whole exercising or working on yourself didn't work for me you know because i thought to myself like what was the point of it if like like how do people get the physiques they they get to where they are and so I didn't think that was possible for me because I was stuck, like, skinny fat. I couldn't get out of this. Like, I told myself like, I couldn't. But then when I actually did the work compared to just talking about it, like, things started to flow into motion. Things started to, like, pick up once I started being more consistent every day. That was, like, the one thing I didn't realize was that consistency works. I always thought it was just, like, some sort of, like, people were just talking out of their ass or something is like, no, it actually works. Like doing it every single day and just sticking to a routine that you like to do. And then eventually it'll just build over time and you'll see results. So yeah, that's key. It's pretty that, crazy. That that's what held me like, back for so long. Yeah. Like I'm going to wake up at 5 AM and I'm going to run several miles and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna work and then I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna meditate and I'm gonna read the book and then I'm gonna take this and take that and do this and that and of course that's it's a lot you know and I wanted to do that every single day bro I want to go from not doing any of that to go to doing all of that every day what do you know three days later I'm like dude, I can't do this. Like, it's, uh, it's so bad. You know, I'm so bad. I'm useless. I can't even do like... You were going for like from zero yeah. to like 200 miles an hour so, in like exactly. a minute. Right? And expecting, like, how... expecting like the best, that right? That's a word, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. To the car analogy that you said, like you were expecting a like popular car to run like an F1 <laughs> like mm -hmm. overnight you know yeah that's not how it, works. it, it needs a <laughs> you, you lot burn of off the engine like you explode your own engine yeah so. you need a lot of build up you know you need to progressively improve those characteristics that that are going to allow you to be that you know to whatever it is the goal you have but um what i did was to take <laughs> it like you know easy baby steps one thing after another you know and but, uh, I don't want to to care like cut off. I, I want to continue to hear about like what else happened in your life, Dom. Same here. So you were sorry. at this. I'm sorry to cut you off, Adrian, no, but no, no. I, I don't want us to miss the okay the nice um, stuff too. Where was I? Like, yeah, seeing all the uh, effects of building my physique started like getting more attention from people. Like people started treating me well. And then, like, when the jobs reached out to me, that's when I s 
started to see like okay something's starting to work because that's when like march came around and that's when all the jobs sort of started to flow in um <clears throat> and then i started getting like freelance offers for this studio or like some of the big offers at like netties and stuff <laughs> that was coming around that time and then like uh 3d total gig and then finally the dreamworks gig last month so that was a big one for me and it was all because of just like working on myself and focusing all that energy inwards to build myself up because in the past you know i got no opportunities i was reaching out for opportunities i was chasing what i wanted in life but i never got it because i didn't do the internal work i just left myself how i was and i was chasing for scraps i didn't like build myself up to where like i really wanted to be and that's why you know i didn't get success in the past but now like after putting in the work and working on my art too on the side trying to build that up my portfolio my mental health my relationships with other people everything just snowballs into full circle and like getting out of any sort of depressed states where i'm feeling down um finding outlets for my happiness that sort of thing yeah it's been good life's been good <laughs> i feel i feel good inside you know like i'm not feeling what's the word like unsatisfied anymore or there's like no hole inside my heart anymore i feel full you know <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's awesome man so cool. <laughs> I'm happy for you. What about right you now. guys? I'm, I'm really, really happy. Yeah. I mean, you guys saw me like several months ago or like last year, mm -hmm. two years ago even. I was not where I wanted to be. Or at least, yeah, physically and job-wise, you know. Yeah, I, I think just... like uh, a lot of change happened over the past like couple of years with all of us it's been interesting yeah. it's like the growth you know because it's it's like we've been working towards the this moment uh for a while and mm -hmm. i get the feeling that it, it, this is just the start you know so like after you're putting a ton of work it starts to work out and then from here on out it's just like an upwards trend you know and it's it seems it's also like, good to surround yourself with yeah. like-minded people too who are on your same journey. You don't want to be around people who are kind of just stuck in their own ways. They don't want to improve. They kind of just want to blame everyone else for their problems. You always want to be with people who are actively leveling up in their lives too because it'll affect your growth outcome because it'll influence you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I was constantly expecting stuff in the past. I was doing something, expecting something from it. And it wasn't until like I started to kind of actually open up that passion door inside of me and just let my pure creativity, imagination, pure passion, man, pure love for the craft run loose. Then um, it wasn't until then that I actually started to see the results of that. You know, it's it's almost like if you're if you're comparing it to like planting a seed and, and just watering it because you want to water it, not because you're supposed to. You know, I'm supposed to do this, but I'm supposed to study this. I'm supposed to, you know, do this kind of work or take these kind of jobs. What do you want actually? That's what I did. That, that that that's what I realized with Heaven Orion, with everything, with you guys, with Lightshare Podcast, with everything. It's like everything the you YouTube thought. Channel. 
everything you yeah. thought you wanted like you're just realizing what you actually needed and i'm welcoming everything like every single event that happened be it good be it bad i don't care everything formed me everything shaped me into who i am right now i wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those bad situations you know if it wasn't for those bad moments that i learned so much from because that's an important thing too if you let them kind of keep you down it's counterproductive it's 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 exactly the opposite of what we're talking about here but if you if you use them to learn something from them you know let's say you go to this dark place in your mind right and it totally sucks it's horrible you can stay there and crumble and cry all you want you're not gonna get out if you don't try anything but if you deny that like i'm not here i'm not here i'm not here that's not gonna work either because you are there <laughs> you know so you have to get acknowledge the situation and think about a way to get out of there if you don't know about any way just try to i don't know man just put your left foot and left foot in, in front of the right foot and then the right foot in front of the left one and and you know step by step we all make it out of hell man like we can all get out of there like it, it just takes small steps don't expect to kind of make a huge jump and get out of there right like that can happen too but it's like a minority of situations it's, it's very it, low possibility so i feel like yeah anyone can go from a four to an eight like they can level up their life from you know a low point to a high point if they, they put their mind to it they'll have to go through the five and the six and then the seven yeah and then the eighth and once they reach the eight they realize holy shit there's another another you mountain turn to, it up there's another mountain a little to, bit higher yeah <laughs> Like there's yeah. more mountains they for don't me to even climb. Know what Dang. the aid looks like when they start, you know, like that's yeah. the thing, right? You don't even know where you can get to. You, you just know you don't want to be a four anymore. And I'm taking this uh, example of yours with the numbers, right? You you just don't want to be here anymore. You don't know how high you want to go, but you just don't want to be a four anymore. Once you become a five, then you go like. <laughs> Oh, that's actually cool. You, you, you don't want to make the same amount of money anymore. You don't want to look the same anymore. You don't want to work on the same things anymore. You, you just don't want to like stay there. And there's like this fire under your ass that motivates you to like get out of this shitty situation that you find yourself in. And um, and the reason you, you feel want like more struggle. because you realize it's possible. Yeah, and yeah. because like you, I don't know about you guys, but like. I look at my life and even though like it improved a lot, I always get the feeling of like, okay, I like my life. I'm happy, but this is not what I want for the rest of my life. Like the rest of my life, it's this infinite amount of possibilities and potential. And I want to be able to like execute on that and like achieve everything, you know? And I get the feeling that that never goes away. You know, like you are always uh, happy, but always like, not completely satisfied with everything that you not necessarily like i don't even mean like things you know it's not like what you own although yeah, like yeah. that's a part of it growth yeah. but in general like the 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 yeah concept of just, the idea of growing mm -hmm. exponentially like you're a, a completely different person from where you were at three years ago four years ago like your mindset change your appearance change you don't look anything like your old past mm -hmm. it's like a brand new person and people in your past when they see you now they're like <laughs> they can't accept it <laughs> or like they have this surprise look on their face i get it like all the time too like from past friends and family members when they see me six years later i never talked to them in that time period I'm like holy crap like you've grown <laughs> I don't even recognize yeah. you anymore. I mean, when you change, bro, you, you get like all sorts of likes or dislikes, all the weird looks, yeah, or the, the praising too. looks, the nice words, the bad words, you know, you get a little bit of everything. But you know what? You don't do this for the likes. You don't do this for external validation. 
You know why you do this? Because you yourself want to see yourself in that better position. You want to see, you want to look at yourself in the mirror and, and see someone you're proud of. And I'm not talking about the fi the physical appearance anymore. I'm I'm like, look at that guy in the eyes and realize that that's someone you dreamed about being long ago. That's a super interesting exercise to do, man. You know, like when I was a, a teenager, I went through like some, my teenage years were like a little bit rough for me, like the high school years and all of that. And I remember exactly doing that, you know, like looking myself in the mirror. And back then it was like, oh man, I'm a disgrace, you know. Like I used to look at myself in the mirror and think like, I'm just a piece of shit. Like it was a... <laughs> it, um, I didn't mean it, it like yeah, that, bro. <laughs> it, no, no, but I, I, uh, I'm telling you this because it's like, it's the exact opposite, you know. It's like, yeah. um, you need to look yourself in the mirror and be proud of yourself. And if... If by like any reason, because of any reason you are not, fix that. You know, because mm -hmm. it is within your powers to yeah. fix those things. And if you can do that and if you are aware of what makes you unsatisfied with yourself, do that. Like fix it. It's it can be hard. It reminds me of the but David Goggins thing, what he said. Um I mean he he said that same concept about, you know, the lies that we tell ourselves or the lies that other people will tell us because you know, growing up <clears throat> i think my parents told me that like oh you look handsome you know you look fine like you look good and then you know i'm wearing like my pants all the way up to my waist and i'm wearing a <laughs> just a tacky polo shirt and nerdy glasses and they're like oh you look handsome you look fine and then out in the real world you know they're giving me like weird looks and stuff you know I'm not as handsome as they say I am, you know, I'm not as handsome as I think I would be, you know, so you kind of have to take off the rose colored glasses and see yourself for who you actually are and take like a real look at your flaws too. You know, you can't just be like blind to all that. <clears throat> like if something's not working, yeah, like obviously you have to change it. Don't change everything about yourself, but change the things that aren't bringing value to your life. You know? Yeah, I, I would say important. that it's kind of like make your true self appear, you know? Because yeah. you are full of flaws and you are full of like, like you are not a perfect human being. And no one is, but if you put your best effort in, you can be like a lot better than you currently are. And that's a constant pursuit, I feel like. It's a. It's constantly, constantly looking yourself in the mirror and like being honest and upfront about what's it, what is it that you are doing correctly. So like praise yourself for that, but also mm -hmm. what where can you still improve, find room to improve. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people will tell you like nice things, just to not hurt your feelings and stuff like that. Yeah, but I got that a lot. Yeah, I I don't so much. I don't mean to get too personal here, but like I've I've always been pretty harsh with myself, especially my late teen years. Um I never had that thing where I looked in the mirror and I thought like really bad things of myself, like you're a piece of shit, you're worthless, stuff like that. But I did see like the range <laughs> just, of to, just to be clear, you know, I was very depressed back then. So I'm not saying like that's yeah, a regular that's thing to do, but I think like it's worth for no, people to understand that sometimes there's a lot you, of, you there's go a lot of through that. Like that. There's, yeah. yeah, I went through that too. So just yeah. Call. So all I want to say is that um, I I did see, however, like the the extra room for improvement always. <laughs> like I'm like, all right, I'm not as bad as I think I am, but there's definitely a lot more to improve. How am I going to do that? And I wanted to say that mm, it's extremely important to never neglect the way you talk to yourself because it's really going to set up the mood and the the, the overall uh, tone for your, the, the way you live with yourself day to day. It's going to 
take away the motivation or hand you more motivation you know and and depending on the type of people uh, the the person you are you know where you take criticism with like um i'm gonna prove you wrong or you know what you said really hurt me and maybe you're right and i'm not like that good and i'm and you crumble you know but there's some people who take motivation from that fire you throw at them and they do something with it i think that's kind of a Fuel. it's a dark place to take motivation from as well because it's like a, a source of external validation it does work for sure yeah you change but you change just to prove someone else wrong right and right now like right now i couldn't care less bro about what someone else has to say about anything that i do anything about me you know it, it and this is very very big coming from me i'm a huge overthinker i used to be a big people pleaser a lot of times for for very very long Damn, <laughs> i i still do it sometimes but it's always that feeling of like not letting someone down come on dude he needs you now come on dude he, she asked you nice or whatever right like you're supposed it's almost like a duty or something oh it's because we're family oh it's because we're close friends but i don't want to do it however you still do it because it feel you feel like that obligation it's like in some a way. personality traits that some people but, have like i have it too like i'm a helper yeah i like to help people and i don't like to see people down so it's that instinctive nature to want to reach out to somebody and hmm. not you know yeah, see we, their life look, crumble so we put our lives on the line for them yeah and we're kind people yeah i get it but what i'm talking about is when you end up doing that because you want to fit in this tribe because you want to be nice so they can think nice things about you because that's what that's what you want and that comes from an egotistic place you see how it's always like your image you have of yourself that you're trying to take care of you don't always do it because you're trying to be nice expecting nothing in return that's pure love that's like actual kindness i'm gonna help you you don't owe me anything ever i just do it for you right i don't do it for myself i do it for you but a lot of times when you help someone you spend your life waiting until that guy pays back and if he doesn't then you get mad and you think humanity is a is like really bad is like horrible like human beings are horrible blah 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 and all those kind of um, mindsets right i tend to see the the brighter side always i do acknowledge the the dark uh, sides of um people but that doesn't mean that doesn't take away the fact that they have this light in themselves so um i forgot what i was going with this but um mostly to say that um i've i've been very harsh with myself sometimes too you know and i, I we've discussed this in, in previous videos like the way i was approaching my workouts my my uh my discipline in general like adrian i want you to be disciplined man i want you to build this discipline why can't you do it I was always approaching it the wrong way, never giving myself a break and taking pride in that even. Like, oh yeah, I'm doing this with no stop, you know? And, and then what? You're wasted, bro. How long can you do that for? You just want to run yeah. once, like one little sprint in your entire life? Or do you want to keep walking this entire journey and see what's at the end of it? Or see how far you can get? Because there's like challenges and challenges and challenges. What I'm saying is that I'm finding balance, man. I'm finding balance, bros. This is what makes me so happy, so fulfilled. Never been this proud in my life. Proud in a in a good way, of course. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I do see everything coming together now. Everything, every piece of the puzzle falling in place every dots can every single dot connecting to the next one and it's almost like Talk everything about your you, your experience throughout the last couple of months then 
Dude, everything you've been working for so far has a meaning. Despite you thinking there were separate things, ah, that, that was just a little gig. That was just an event I went to. That was just a, a dude I met at that event or whatever. That's how they line up in your timeline. That's how it yeah. works. Every single little connection you made <clears throat> makes a difference. You never know who you're going to end up working with. Remember what we said in so many other episodes? Like, be kind, man. Be nice. You never know. It's it's free, right? You don't have to take it out on people, you know, just because you didn't mm -hmm. figure out how to fix it inside of yourself first. Like some internal problems. Yeah. You, stop projecting. That's what I'm trying to say. That's something we do too. A lot of times, you know, like... Um, when you see someone else doing something you're afraid of doing yourself, you don't want to do that ever, and you see someone else doing that, you kind of subconsciously get mad at them. And kind of, you don't realize it, but you, you get mad, you know? And you react. Thing. Yeah. You okay. go like, why are you late, man? Like, I've, I've been waiting for you for 15 minutes. That might be a thing you're afraid of doing yourself, like being late and making someone wait or whatever. Just because someone did it to you, you're taking it on them. So that's why I'm saying I'm I'm trying not to, you know, make the most out of each moment, no matter how bad it looks to you at that time. You know how you do that? By coming back here. This very moment, right now, the present. Stop living in the future. Stop living in the past. Stop imagining things. Stop remembering things. You're here. This is all you have right now. Yes, of course, it's connected to things that happened and to things that may happen in the future. But stop thinking, stop crossing bridges that you haven't gotten to yet. You know, because that's what we do. We keep thinking of that conversation from tomorrow, what she's going to say, what they're going to say when I do this. Oh, my God, that meeting from yesterday. I think that I'm going to get fired or whatever because some stupid thing you said or some little joke you threw in. It doesn't matter, man. Like, you keep thinking of things that are not here. And it's taking away your attention and your focus. And now you're distracted. And you know what? Now you're also exhausted. And what do you do? You go to distract yourself even further. You know? You rely on some entertainment. Something to take away the pain. Because that's ultimately what everything's based on. All this bad stuff is based on pain, in my opinion. And it's not like pain is always a bad thing. Everything has a function, right? Anger, sadness, all that stuff, pain. Everything is there for a reason. If you abuse it, that's when it goes wrong. If you live like that 24-7, <laughs> that's when all that stress, all that stuff is very taxing. Very taxing. So, um, fuck, I forgot now Like what I was going to say earlier but um because <laughs> sometimes i trap myself in the in the conversation i no longer know where i was going with this but this You're... just yeah like my latest months you asked right uh -huh. yeah so once i saw like some of the workout i was into at the time was working out actually was was giving me results that i didn't see in other places in the past because i've been trying this i've been trying that this was the fastest i was like holy shit so that four started to become a five now and i'm like it works you know i can do it and i i kept doing that and then everything else started to feel uh to fall in place like you now have the physical movement now you add the nutrition so these these subtle changes you do you know like, I'm not going to eat any more processed food. Well, that's kind of unrealistic. Let's try to minimize the processed food instead of saying, like, no more processed food, right? So, that's yeah. the equivalent of taking the two kilogram <clears throat> uh, dumbbells, right? What are you going to do with that? Nothing. It's just to get used to it. I'm getting used to the fact that I'm no longer going to eat this, this, and that. And then next week, probably cutting out something else. And then sugar. And then this, and then that. And at the same time, 
because <laughs> it's funny how this happened you know i got this gig freelance gig i'm like dude this is the most amount of money that i've ever been offered for something like this so it was a huge jump for me one of those moments of like it's happening <laughs> you know like it it's possible but wait is this gonna be like a one-time thing or uh and you start getting worried you know fortunately I, I i cut that out instantly i said like it doesn't matter like this is the opportunity we take it we do it we get it done you know what i'm done with the gig they asked me for another round and i'm like yeah. again <laughs> holy shit i thought it was over that's awesome so that means more money that means more work for me that means i keep this machine running so you should talk about a little bit of your uh, fiverr experience my fiverr experience <laughs> i said you almost did that oh right yeah well <laughs> i never got to actually have any experience with fiverr but mm, yeah that was just a thought you know just like thinking of it, it's some of these things you think of in your most desperate moments should i quit you know i had a uh experience with something similar to fiverr uh it was a platform called like upwork it's okay. <laughs> basically the same thing it's yeah. a um yeah it was like very early on in my career that i got like a couple of things from there but it's it's such a weird thing because like you are com it's basically like a race to the bottom you know <clears throat> it's like whoever can charge the lowest basically gets it and uh it's it's so weird because like after you you start like getting freelance gigs because of the work that you do and people come like to you because of what they see on art station or instagram or whatever mm -hmm. and they want you they don't want anyone else not only like you don't have to chase after clients you can pick your own clients and like basically set your price right and of I'll course that's saying no <laughs> Yeah, like, of course, setting your price has to do with, like, basically how much people usually make, and you can be, like, completely unreasonable. But it means that you have more power over how much you make per, like, per day or per hour or per piece, like, uh, however it is that you want to charge. Like, it's, you start to have more control over your own work and, like, income and all that. Like, mm hmm yeah yeah totally it's, like it's different yeah. i again it was one of those moments of i never got to do it again but um i was ready to set it up you know like maybe maybe i can do this you know maybe like yes i'm this this desperate right now like i i'm not finding anything um not making any money or like yeah something has to come up man i can't just wait but I kept getting like offers and stuff like that. It's just that most of them never got anywhere. And of course you also went through, like, I think you can relate to this too, Dom, when you said, um, you know, when we applied to so many different companies, never got like a oh, yeah. reply <laughs> or we yeah, did was, get a, a negative reply. Yeah. I mean, I would apply to jobs overseas you know, in the past when I didn't even apply to any jobs around here. <laughs> Because I applied to the Ubisoft in, I think it was in Barcelona. I'm not sure. But I don't know why I applied over there. <laughs> I just did. I just sent an application over there. Or no, it was. I think it was Romania or something like that. Really? And I just like, Dude. yeah. I just sent an application like to other companies overseas because I was thinking like, hmm, maybe I might work overseas. But I have no idea yet. It was just like oh, this. Oh, but because because you like, wanted to move, like to get that, there. yeah, to get that overseas experience, living in some other country. Uh -huh. But I realized that was stupid because my portfolio wasn't even at any sort of high quality level at the time. But I was just wanting to chase down the companies to get the job because I felt this, yeah, this desperation to like. Yeah, be a part of that company or be a part of that studio like wow that looks cool i want to be on that team but i'm chasing it like i'm not 
waiting dude, for dude you, it you nailed it there yeah chasing yeah. it right forcing it i need this to happen right now mm. that was in my opinion the the wrong thing to do for me because chasing that only got it pushed it further from me so all rejections yeah yeah <laughs> and um <clears throat> yeah, the the Fiverr thing that you mentioned as an example is just the same thing for me as if I, like when I thought about like, again, one of those moments, right? Like, what if I just look for a job at some factory or something, like some regular job, you know, maybe a restaurant or like a, I'm working as a waiter or something. I work my eight hour shift and then I come back home and I, I paint, right? And that's like that was really really tough it's one of those one second thoughts that you think in in terms of images you know and uh, fortunately i have i, I had people in, in my life that was like instantly talking me out of that you know um even myself you know like adrian what the fuck <laughs> do you think we carried this whole thing so far just for you to quit now and and go work some ordinary job dude we're aiming for something else right and yeah that's it was so just those too. dude not for <laughs> me that, that that's it not for me so um you know what else was not for me at the time like thinking i i started this with like the mindset of like i'm gonna work at some huge giant corporation big company overseas i'm gonna live in this country for like two years then move like i'm gonna be a globe uh, trotter you know um i'm just gonna jump from one to another and then i'm gonna settle somewhere and i'm gonna work as a freelance with all that knowledge that i got from all these studios and working in house and all that stuff that was my mindset back then. Like I'm talking very early beginnings of my career, right? Because that's what you saw around you. Like you nurture yourself from the environment you're surrounding yourself with. And that was it. I'd like see, I like, only had yeah. the internet. Other concept artists were talking about how they traveled to this place, did work at this place, you know? Yeah. Like I saw that lifestyle too. And I was like, maybe this is the way to do it. You know, yeah. like you go from big studio to big studio, this country, like you see all these artists like traveling around the world, working for these big clients. You're like, hmm, maybe that could happen in my lifetime. <laughs> That's because so we... you chase that same sort of lifestyle too. We almost. didn't have a voice back then. Like yeah. your own voice, you, you were not listening to it. I wasn't either. But then later on, it, it gets louder and louder it and, yeah itself. and it's impossible to ignore it anymore so when you listen to that and you follow it this is what you get <laughs> your destiny this is your current self right and um and yeah dude like i again going back to the client kind of stuff freelance i get this gig get it done they want to work with me more again so another round and I'm like, this is insane. Like, what is this avalanche of this tsunami, you know, of like so many offers, so many job offers, like my art station, even on Instagram, you know, and email, all kinds of jo uh, jobs, literally like illustration, studio jobs, concept art, uh, even graphic design, which I didn't understand exactly um, why, but dude everybody was like hey adrian hi adrian hello adrian you know and every email was like <laughs> them offering something like we're from this company oh look i have a book i need like a like an illustration for the cover or whatever or i'm, I'm from this company i'm the ceo of this studio and i would like you to stuff like that all the time and of course to many of them you have to say no because that's a hard thing for me like i can't i couldn't say no ever because you know, you're a people pleaser. You need to f satisfy everybody. So it's really hard for you to say no to something that you really need at the time, which is a job, right? But bro, there's only 24 hours in your day. And that's something that I had to understand. Like, if I say yes to everybody, then they're gonna realize that I, I can't meet their expectations. There's not enough time. 
yeah. not enough energy. So you have to select, you have to prioritize. I just felt that pressure recently with the full-time job and then not finishing the freelance deadlines on time. Hmm. So that's also like another thing because sometimes what if like you don't finish the deadline and they only pay like half of what they owe you? <laughs> that's also like why it's hard to multitask so many different jobs. Yeah. Because only 16 of the hours in the day are like working hours and the rest of the eight hours you sleep. So you don't have that much time <laughs> and you yeah. can only do so much. Look, it's a lot, man. It's, it's very much a lot. That's a lot of time to sit here and, yeah. and, and you know, glued to the screen and stuff. But um, yeah, w what I realize is that at the same time I'm completing this other freelance gig, another freelance gig hits me up and yeah, I, I love it, man. When people are so straightforward, like, hey, this is the project. This is the money. Are you interested? That's it. It's no longer like, so how much do you charge? We would be interested, you know, then you tell them your rate and they go like, uh, well, yeah, we'll think about it. Or they not even say anything anymore. But <clears throat> people who come right at you with these numbers directly, that's amazing, dude. I think it's because they see, they see your value now. They see the quality of your work because usually those clients that are like hesitant to give you that high number, they know that your skills at the time weren't as high. So they're hesitant to give you, but now that you've leveled up, they're like, okay, here's, here's the money. Like, we'll give it to you. Like no hesitation because yeah. <laughs> you've built up your value. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to like focus on yourself, focus on your craft, make sure it's like top quality. Yeah. So people will yeah. pay for that. It's... People will just give it to you. <laughs> Here you go. Here's the money. It's funny because I was, I was reviewing uh, portfolios recently and it was a session with students and um, I realized that I'm, I'm kind of always saying the same thing, you know, like, please guys, you got to get to know yourselves. You got to learn like the way you are, the way you react, the way you talk, why you do that, why you think like that, why you draw like this and stuff like that. And I'm realizing that I'm never someone to ask those questions of like, how do I get a job in the industry? What should I put in my portfolio? And I'm like, oh shit. Like, what do I say now? Cause like when I look at myself, my journey is the most organic, chaotic thing ever. Like I never had a plan, never. I was only being worried of like being prepared. That's all I care about because it, my philosophy is that plans can go wrong. It's good. It's okay to have like a structure, like a plan, like a little thing, but not to stick to it no matter what. It's like, I'm, I'm, I want to remain flexible and I want to be prepared. I want to just train myself for whatever come, uh, whatever I come across to be able to overcome that obstacle. Because again, plans can go wrong, but preparation is forever. That's my opinion. That's how I live and it works for me. Might not work for you, but that's my truth. And um, how do I, how do you tell that to a student? Like, I don't know, man, just do your thing. You know, you can't say that. So what I go for is like the, the examples, like, look, man, I, started to work on my project. I was passionate about it. I started, I stopped comparing myself to other people. Like, oh shit, Dom is so good at environments. Like I got to beat him. You know? I got to be better than him. <laughs> oh shit. Andrew is so good. Just... I was like, yeah, <laughs> Andre is like so much better at designing like spaceships and vehicles and stuff like that. How do I beat that? Why do you want to beat that, bro? Why do you want to be better? Like, why don't you create your own stuff? Maybe you you excel at characters and you're so focused on being this copycat of someone else. 
be it Feng Zhu, be it, uh, I don't know, any, any, any artist out there that you may admire, you know? I'm saying Feng Zhu because in my early, early beginnings, that's how I actually got into concept art because of his YouTube of videos. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted to be like him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you learn a lot of be a lot of these things on the way, you know, <laughs> there's no guidebook. There's no instruction manual on how to do things and how, of course, there's like formulas, right? You can follow like the fundamentals, you study fundamentals, then you do this. And then there's a technical stuff about like, oh, learn this program, not this other program. L learn the software first, then move on to this. And yeah. About Andre's story. Um, clearly, I'm a little bit under the weather today. So <laughs> <laughs> that happened. You can summarize it. Uh, but no, uh, all jokes aside, like, well, ever since the last podcast, I moved um, uh, with my fiance. Now we are living together. Um, I finally have a, nice guys. like, I consider my yeah. setup right now kind of like a dream studio setup. You know, it's my little corner of the world that it's, I'm so happy, like, working here now, man. It's, it's crazy. You achieved yeah. what? most people couldn't in their lifetime <laughs> at least like yeah yeah man i i feel like a a lot of that has been me um kind of like getting used to a new lifestyle uh i changed a little bit the way that i eat in the sense that like we are eating so much cleaner now that we prepare everything in the house um work has been like it's already a thing because I get more and more responsibilities at work, like every single day, basically, you know, it's a, it's rewarding. And also I assume this role of a, well, I'm now a lead concept artist there. And what that means is that the lead part it's is stronger than the concept art part because I deal with like juniors all day long and dude, it's so rewarding to help people day. like achieve yeah. the, uh, their goals and like get them at, to the next level basically um, yeah. and that means that I'm learning like so much as well like I'm studying a lot more than I ever did I think because it, it's not only for myself anymore it's kind of like okay I need to to be there not only for me but like these people rely on my advice to, to get there so I also want to be as prepared as possible to help with anything. Uh, and not only like, look, the client stuff, yeah, that's fine. You know, like you get used to work, you get like, uh, you want to deliver the best quality possible always. But you do realize that a lot of what you do is because of the people, right? So you create these like strong relationships that kind of like what we have here that they motivate you to give like always more um i feel like that's that's been a huge change over the past few months because well now of course like living together i want to be the best partner possible uh we adopted a dog which for me was a particularly big step because i spent my entire life being afraid of dogs so it's like um yeah it's it has been like a huge uh learning experience because well, now I love my my <laughs> my little partner there, and we like, yeah, man. Spending time with a a pet or something like that just takes your mind out of the like the mundane concerns, you know. Like you start to realize what really matters, and mm. I feel like I stop wasting a lot of time, you know. Like when we touch on like entertainment stuff. Dude, I, I I haven't been watching like I, I used to watch a lot of YouTube videos, you know. And I haven't been watching like as many anymore. Actually like almost not. And you realize that those things are just distractions of like the real life. You're basically like, you are throwing your life away when you do something without uh 
like kind of what you said, you know, Adrian, uh, you have to be there. And some things that there are things that you do just to like take your mind out of that moment. Yeah. But that each moment is so valuable. That's like that's one of the reasons why uh, I try to like stay away from social media during the past few months as well. And every time that we talk, I try to like have these kind of conversations, like have jump on a call or something like that. Because I want to be present there. And I want to... It's more meaningful. I feel... Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's the step that I'm trying to take. Make everything more meaningful, you know? So if I'm watching something, it's intentional. If I'm eating something, it's intentional. Um, yeah, for instance, on, on, on YouTube, I found a way to remove the the recommended column on the side. When you're watching a video, there's no more recommended. So it's empty, right? So this way I can stay focused on the very videos that I want to, like for instance, you're studying a certain subject, you're trying to learn how to use OBS or, you know, how to uh, use this new tool or whatever, you know, like the playlist or whatever. Um, in order to avoid being distracted by other recommended videos, you just look at what you came for and that's it and you're gone. Most Nothing of my else. videos are self improvement videos. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, but, all I pretty I mean, much watch most of the day. <laughs> yeah, but you will see another one and another one, and you will click on it because you want to watch it. Yeah. And there goes your four hours today. That's why I try to make sure I'm doing something while I'm actively listening to it. So I'm not just zoning into the video and then like not doing anything productive. So maybe I'll go for like a run. And then put it like in my playlist or something. <clears throat> yeah, I used to do that with podcasts. Uh, like if I want to listen to a podcast, it's the like exercise hour or like if I take my dog to, for a walk, I usually put a podcast in because then like I get her to be um, like more free, you know, like let her loose. And it's a, she enjoys like playing on, on the grass and stuff like that. And I can just, like take this I, i've been spending a lot more time like under the sunlight which is something that i didn't use to do and yeah hey, i want to ask yeah, you man. something guys do you realize how there's like a cap on how much information how much knowledge you can absorb at a time like if you watched today eight hours of like uh the guy you mentioned earlier i forgot his name andrew um uh, huberman huberman um, imagine like we all love that, right? We love that kind of uh, information and all that stuff, but there's only so much you can learn right uh, now. And also like another thing that I change, it's I only watch something if it has an intention behind it. You know? So it's like one of the things that happens, especially like at this day and age is that there are thousands of podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. And there's thousands of videos and everything. So I'm doing kind of like uh objective based decisions right so i don't watch like all of those episodes i watch the episodes that have particular information that i will implement in my life or either like that day or that month or that week or as an example one of the things that i've been using youtube for it's research because although like reading is so much faster i'm not a particularly good like uh I learn the best if I mix everything. So I listen a little bit, I watch a little bit, I see like visual references and all of that. So I'm, I'm doing like project-based uh, YouTube watching basically. So like I have my notebook down and I like put the video on and let's say that like that's the coffee break or like that's the dinner break or whatever. And uh, okay, now they like I'm watching a video based on something that I actually want to learn. Yeah. It's not like pure entertainment or it's a little bit of both, you know, because you are distracted and you are like maybe getting your mind away of work a little bit, but you're also expanding your mind a little bit more. And I realized that like for designers, it's a, look, if you want to get good at design, like drawing, it's, it has very little to do with it, you know? It's how much you learn about the world that really matters.
it's observation like, based it's observation and it's like comprehension uh, as well understanding yeah it's understanding forms. and also like linking different things together uh the function like of everything and broader um the of purpose the world. behind yeah. those forms and shapes and stuff that's why studying nature is so important in my opinion <laughs> yeah you know like i was back when i look back like to my school days it only makes sense that like I came to this direction, like that I took my life into the designer direction because I used to love math and physics and all of that, but I also used to love biology and like how uh, organisms work, you know? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Even the, the artificial kind of like stuff, big... even the, you know, the, the vehicles, the mechs, the, all the sci-fi things, even those things kind of imitate a lot of stuff that is found in nature first like you said you know like certain organisms the way they move the the movement the motion the um yeah the muscle structure the the yeah. skeletal structure everything you know how they are assembled together and stuff like that it's just some thoughts that i some realizations that i came across you know like holy shit everything bro everything's connected <laughs> so and it's also like you learn that there's no team you know there's no fantasy there's no sci-fi it, it has nothing to do with, there's no like realism if you're doing design everything it's everything so if you learn how to design one thing properly like of course there are specifics of each like subject basically so like the way that you design a prop and the like design principles that you apply are the same design principles that you apply to a character, are the same design principles that you apply towards an environment, towards a vehicle, towards like whatever it is that you're doing. It's the same principle that you apply when you are designing your work environment. It's the same design principles that you apply. It sounds like cookie crazy, you know, but like it's the same design principles that you apply when you are designing your day to day in a way that you enjoy it, you know, because. Yeah. If you if you're building your your, uh, your habits like what you had before, you know, like you said, oh, I want to do everything. But like, imagine if you had a design that it's entire made out of details. You know, that's busy. That's like that doesn't work. That is a without no balance, structure. without like no hierarchy. There, no hierarchy. Exactly. There's no like breathing room. No. And we use the expression smoke. like uh, all the time on design, right? Oh, you need like breathing room in the rest areas. But where are your rest areas of your day if you're working 24 seven? Yeah. You know, it's a, uh, and I think like designing your own life, it's part of what I've been trying to do. And uh, I, I won't say like it's super easy. And I definitely have been facing like some struggles with finding the right balance with the new life that I have to take right now. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like if you feel 10% overwhelmed, you know, I think that's a, a good challenge. You just, just don't let yourself like be completely overwhelmed by everything that you're trying to do. But like Dude, that linear of, uh, of like, you, you, you face challenges and there's actually, I think that's another thing from Andrew Huberman that I learned. Like if you want to be kind of like on the zone or at your best performance ever, find something that you can do right around i think it's 75 percent of the time or 85 percent of the time mm -hmm. because those like extra times that you cannot do that completely right or that you don't quite get how it's done is what you push will push you forward to like learn yeah. more and so you have the exact balance of like again i recommend people watching his stuff you have, of course, you, have the, you have the momentum from the 75 percent yeah. things that you do well you have the momentum and you also like are just challenge just enough that you don't feel discouraged but that you go after the new knowledge that you need to, to make that happen yeah yeah that's it's nice that you said the thing about like your to make it look like less overwhelming because i was losing my mind over like so many things i want to get done you know i don't know how how long i have you know or when do i want to have them done but I got myself one of these things, you know, it's a little tablet to kind of take notes and stuff. 
and yeah. I take notes every day, bro. <laughs> every day I, I write it down and it's like anything, anything you want to do, workout, shower, like send emails, um, walk, I don't know. You Put it down, you know, write it down on, on, on that thing or on a piece of paper, I don't care. But you can have it somewhere. So it's almost like, it's pretty rewarding as well. Like you have the sensation that you're, you know, uh, doing like you accomplishing tasks like making yeah. it happen you know so it's motivating it makes you feel like it gives you the sensation of progress like you're actually achieving things that's done this is done too and this one too and now yeah, i only have these three the, things to get done you know i remember that like i used to we have the talk before on that like workout episode where i mentioned that i used to work out at night and that was one of the things that i needed to change because like my new routine and um, now I work out in the mornings and I get why people like usually try to do that in the morning, you know, because if you get that right first thing of the day, like your day, it's uh, already set up for success, you know, and it's the, yeah. Look, I usually work out in the morning it, and when yeah, I don't, so, it feels like a burden. For me was a trade off, you know, because like in the evening, I felt like I could push like more weight and I was like, uh, all right, I, I was better fed and now I work out like fasted. So the amount of energy that you carry through the workout is different, you know, like mm -hmm. it's not the same thing after you ate like five different meals in a day. And then if you work out fasted, right, it's a different kind of energy. Yeah. But at the same time, like what it, what I made like as a negative impact in terms of the amount of weight that I can push in that makes up in terms of like oh you wake up the first thing that you take is like the sunlight in your face right and then you go out and you uh you kind of like take that uh take a challenging thing the first thing in the day right that's like you have challenge the first thing that you do in your day everything else looks like it's a little bit easier it flows a little bit smoother and you already accomplished one goal so like every other goal so I'm like, oh, you're not losing the streak right now, right? Like, you already started well. Why would you fuck up, like, on the yeah. third goal of the day or the fourth goal of the day? Yeah, it builds and, that, uh, that kind of momentum, that kind it of... It builds the momentum, yeah. That sense of, like, a quest mm -hmm. that you have, you know, <laughs> like, Which is, don't mess up it, now. It's good if you want to... Responsibility. Like, as an example, I, I, I set that up so that uh, I love working out, you know, so for me, that's not the challenge. The challenge, of course, is like put, push more weight or like the challenge is different. It's not going there and working out. It's what you do there. Yeah. But then that sets you up for the things that you are not really keen to do, you know, like because there are topics that I'm studying right now that I find a little bit boring, but it's knowledge that I need to perform better at what I'm doing. So it's like the the starting correctly motivates me to like on those areas, you know, so it's kind of like a balance of energy, you know, so like you start taking your energy very up high, doing something that you love. And for me, it's coming, like either you, working out or work, you know, like drawing. Yeah. Cause you're coming from that winning mood. From yeah, the things you've already exactly. done, you know, and now it's like, okay, let's do this thing too. Even though it's like a little more boring, but it needs to get done. And before, like, the, it was, since I, I like doing that already, like, no matter how low my energy was at the end of the day, I would still do that because something that I love, right? So I think starting your day and ending your day with something that you really love doing, it's things that are, like, very good for building habit, you know? So, like, every yeah. day at the end of the day, I now, like, play and train my dog a little bit, you know, for about, like, an hour, yeah. an hour and a half. And that's something that I love doing as well. So like I start the day on a high note and I end the day on a high note and the overall impression, like even if work was shitty that day or something bad happened throughout the day, I wake up without remembering it and I go to bed without remembering it. You know, it's like without focusing on that. So the overall impression is that you are always like on a good mood, you know? Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's what happened in the past couple of months for me. 
<laughs> that was awesome, dudes. Man, I'm yeah. I'm feeling blessed, guys. Like every day is like every moment is like pure bliss. It's yeah. just so so cool, so awesome. Like this state of mind. It's like everything, man, in the physical, mental, spiritual, everything in every area of my life. It's it's just purely amazing. I don't know. I'm I'm my mood is like I, I, have you paid attention to this like to your mood every day like what mm. did it used to be what is it like now because for me i think it's it's improved you know like i'm there less a lot I guess. yeah you're like, less from scared moment to moment in your life hmm. but i, I guess have when this you oh, go ahead Andre. No, I, I just going to say like I have this underlying sense of like confidence, no matter what happens, which is yeah. like uh, a little bit of that is like my faith, right? Because I'm a religious person, so I always had some of that uh, understanding of, hey man, everything is being taken mm. care of. Like, there's no need to worry. Right. Right. I have that feeling every time. Like, and, hey, uh, it's gonna be all right. Yeah, and, and I feel like. It's good to have that, and no matter how you come like to that realization, you know. Uh, for me, religion is a big helper. I know that's not the case for everyone, but having that underlying sense of like, look, no matter what happens, you are built in a way that you can deal with anything. So everything will be all right. You know. Yeah. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh. I don't think there's like any sort of misalignment in our lives. Like there is a path like set for each one of us. You know, we don't really know why we're doing this path like subconsciously, but it's laid out for us already. I, I, you know I don't think it's, there's a misalignment, you know, there's course correction. Maybe sometimes you are going the wrong direction and life forces you the right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's kind of how it's, I see. Uh, you're obviously going to go off course if you make the wrong actions. <laughs> like if you decide to be a criminal eventually. <laughs> so oh man, gonna... I was just thinking about that. How did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my life goals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know, man, but sometimes I, I, I think in terms of like, if I was like different people at every stage of my life, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, that Adrian from the past, dude, that guy knew it. He knew it, man. He would be so proud. He could see this. And you, Adrian from the future, man, you're going to see, dude, this is going to be insane. So it's, it's like, you don't actually know exactly how it's going to end, but you have like a vision of it. You know, you, yeah. you kind of think sometimes like, where am I going to be five years from now? 10 years from now what am i going to look like when i'm 50 70 you know my and i, and I guess that self would be proud <laughs> i guess that dictates your current decisions that you're making right now yeah it definitely you know, does you're taking care of yourself for some reason right something that has to do with that vision perhaps or or not or just because you want to feel good and you realize that by doing this whatever it is that you're doing uh, assuming that it's like objectively healthy and pushing you towards like better better everything feels it's good. gonna set the stage for your future yeah. generations like, I feel whoever... like healthy has to do with like I want to enjoy it like the process for as long as I can and like yeah I don't know, man. I feel like every hour that is spent on the gym or working out or eating healthy is one like it's ten hours less that is spent in the hospital or going to the doctor. <laughs> so yeah. So say, hey, yeah. here here's the thing, like it's like stages, right? And some of them are gonna suck more than others, right? Some of them are gonna be amazing. I love this, and some of them, are, uh, well, I wish I would, I could be somewhere else right now. But even those, those are needed. So when you're there, I tend to look at it as if like, I know, but it has to be done. You know, I guess we're doing this now, like Tristan said in, in his episode, 
all right, I guess we're doing this now, you know? And because I, you know that that's, it's not going to last forever. It's temporary. You'll get over it. And then the next yeah. thing, and the next thing is going to be even better. And if it's not, it's because it's not over. There's something else waiting right around the corner. You know it. Look, man, on that note, I think uh, there's something waiting right around the corner for me as well. <laughs> I think we should... Uh, Dinner. Yeah, well, uh, technically, <laughs> on my house around the corner is exactly the bathroom, but that's not what I meant. So. <laughs> I'm just projecting. No, but, but I, I want to uh, <laughs> sit on a positive vibe. It's like, yeah, man, definitely. Like, been good you, this is what I'm getting from I, this. I like, like, when you align yourself with your surroundings, your with the universe in a way. When you're flowing, when you're vibing, when you're enjoying the path, the, the journey, right? Things get better and things start happening. And you're suddenly bombarded by this amount of like opportunities and lots of doors opening for you. And it reminds me of what Dom said recently, like, but why, dude? Why is all of this happening all of a sudden? And I'm like, bro. Because you set it up in the past already. You set this up. Every single step you made was towards this direction. You shouldn't be surprised that all this is happening now. Like, you deserve it. You worked for it. And you got it. And that's it. All the people along the way, too. <laughs> so many opportunities. Like, I know my, my turn is, is over. Uh, from when you guys asked about like the recent months and stuff but dude like to get invited to so many places like dom invited me to the brainstorm class for instance you know uh then this other school also invited me to give a talk then the portfolio reviews here then this thing there then like an online shop like hey would you like to you know uh, sell your art over here and stuff and uh, some so many other examples like that like side gigs side quests side stuff not the main thing but side things that were kind of like impossible to imagine years ago because who are you to assume that someone would care so much about what you do in order to get get you to that point you know it's a weird thing because when you like when you dare to like imagine more for your own life, like the reward is so much bigger than even the like wildest dream that you had. Because yeah. I imagine like for all of us, all we wanted was like, oh, I want to be a concept artist and I want to work like doing art. Like compared to what you have now, that seems kind of like even a humble dream, you know, like something small and shy. And it like most people don't get to experience that you know like doing something that you really want to do or like your passion like most people don't get to explore that side of their life they kind of just do what society tells them to do or what yeah like what everyone else thinks is the normal way to live a good life or like that doesn't seem feasible because everyone else says it's not feasible. So maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I shouldn't take that risk yeah, because it's not try. safe. Yeah. So pushing past your boundaries and seeing what you're capable of is really important. I think everyone has potential to be the best version of themselves. You know? <clears throat> so, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that was a good talk. <laughs> I guess well, I this episode. And on this high note, words of wisdom from Dom. So, <laughs> thank you so yeah, much, you guys. guys. So thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for doing this. Thanks for sharing all your awesome stuff. Um, yep. Look, I don't know what else to say right now. There's so many things that we're leaving out of this conversation that, um, you know, if <laughs> we if we, we kept talking back. yeah like it, this will take several hours but um in general like everything's amazing dude like we're all feeling 
honestly like we're on the right path you know i feel like i'm exactly what i want to be right now so that's all that matters you know and yeah i just wanted to thank the um, thank our subscribers and our viewers for watching us and for i don't know maybe we could get some of your comments you know some of your like what have you guys been experiencing so far how is this year for you guys what achievements what pushbacks what um or setbacks i'm not sure how do you say that but um let us know you know let's let's uh continue the conversation in the comments so let us know and again thank you so much for watching this has been an honor thank you guys for being here another episode Thank you very much boys and yeah um we'll see you guys in the next episode so until then just stay creative take care of yourselves and be your best believe in yourselves always trust yourselves <laughs> see you guys bye bye see you guys see you